Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we're in the fish room. It's going to be another fish room files style video. And you find me in a somewhat philosophical mood. What is the point of fish keeping? What is the point of fish keeping videos? What is the point of fish tube? And lots of people say, oh, I wish I had a fish room. So get a fish room, they said. Sometimes things get away from you slightly. <sighs> what comes first? <laughs> <laughs> what motivates you? So for me on my channel and my videos, it's more about my fish keeping hobby. So this is my hobby and I make videos about it. And generally videos fit into one of two categories. You either are trying to wow or you're trying to how. Show something or explain something. And most of the videos and the creators out there in this niche I think fit into those categories. Your videos are generally going to be a mix of the two and within each of those categories the wow is good and bad. There's the wow my discus are breeding, here are some discus fry that are doing well, that's excellent, that's crazy, that's inspiring, that's brilliant. That could be I'm going to throw some goldfish into a piranha tank and look at that, wow, Ooh, it's horrifying but still wow. So it's everything from good to bad. The how can often be a lot more dry and well, this is how you do X, this is how you set up this style of aquarium, this is how you use this piece of equipment, this is how you do CO2, all those kind of things. They're, they have their place but um, they are a little bit more hard work sometimes to make so you have to have the mix of the two. Often you have to think of why is someone making videos about the fish tank, what's wrong with someone who wants to make videos about fish keeping hobby? And, the good and the bad of it is you, you want to share. We're trying to create a community. You're trying to be part of a community. You share your successes and your failures, in my case, often. Essentially showing off, sharing all the good things. You're trying to inspire people, trying to keep the hobby going, get new people into the hobby, excite them, show them some things that they can try and replicate. So all your MD fish tanks with the beautiful aquascapes and all that sort of thing. So there's real good reasons for that. But often with some channels, earning comes into it. So when you get to a certain size, you start to get a little bit of money. And in my case, great. It helps pay for the running of the fish room. Um, but sometimes it can lead you down a path where you have to make more and more wow videos. And the more wow videos you make, the more you might be of a bent to start to create some of the ones that are a bit whoa rather than wow. I don't think I'm there yet because luckily this isn't a business for me. As much as I'd love you to go and buy all my fish food off my website, link in the description, um, this is a hobby. It's a hobby of my hobby. I make videos about my hobby and the making the videos part is also a hobby. So it's great. I, I don't think a lot of people have that luxury and when you get to a certain size, you do want to start making some money out of it, which might lead you the wrong way. What am I talking about? I don't know. So while the wow might be me showing you my discus breeding, that's a wow. It might be my mega tank, that's wow, it's a big tank, it's going to have big interesting fish in it. These are all good things. We've talked about the negative things that can come under the wows, but the hows can also be useful, certainly, because if you don't know how to do something, you're going to look it up on YouTube and figure out how to do it. The hows generally are going to break down into three categories. It's because someone has studied something and they know that thing inside out and can share that wisdom with you. It can be because someone's got lots of experience in something and they can share that experience with you. You have to be able to critically analyse what you're being shown because if someone studied something or has experience, experience doesn't mean you're right. It just means you've done it for a long time. Um, so with both those categories, you know, it's, you have to employ a little bit of brain power to say, mm, does that click? Is that right? Just because they've been doing it a long time, does that make sense? And then there's also the third category, which I probably fall into with the trial and error. So you'll see things, me trying things, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work. Um, I think it's important to be prepared to put in a little bit of longevity and come back and make sure that did actually work, that thing that I said. Because I try things all the time, I'm not a smart man. Um, sometimes they don't work, sometimes they do work. I'll share both with you here, that's what you get here. So I just wanted to share my motivation of why I'm making these videos. It is because this is my hobby and I'm sharing it with you. It is the trial and error side of things for the how videos and the wow videos are going to be kind of on the lamer side of things. You're never going to get those kind of extravagant, wow, I did all this magical stuff. I went and bought every fish in this fish store. I did a Mr. Beast type challenge in the fish world. I've just not got it in me. So you are going to be limited with what you see here. 
but I still think they're perfectly valuable. I think there is no greater sight than seeing a discus swimming with a load of free swimming fry. That to me is one of the most inspiring things you can get in this hobby. It's fantastic. I loved everything about building my mega tank. Almost everything. But that brings us to today. Look what we've got ourselves into. So you can argue whether it is the YouTube hobby or the fish keeping hobby which has led to the current situation, but basically we've got a lot of large fish in an albeit large tank, but not large enough for them. And then the fish room is just basically in complete disarray. And this absolute abomination is all due to this. So this is one of my WOW projects. I am in the middle of making another video of this, but it's going on for weeks, but I'm basically completely dismantling my mega tank, which is my DIY monster aquarium. It's eight foot by four foot by three foot, um, but it's problematic. And the more I try to fix it, the more I break it or cock something else up. So, yeah, everything's out of it at the moment. I'm drying it out. I'm going to do some other work, but there will be another video about that. But it's just left this complete carnage everywhere as I try and sort things out. I mean, yes, still lovely discus tank, etc. But that's, that's why those fish are over there and not doing... I mean, they're fine, but it's not ideal for them. I um, don't want to have these fish here. But then one of my other wow projects, which I guess is a bit of a how project, is my discus breeding project. And um, we've got some free swimming fry as you can see there, feeding quite happily off the parents. They're now taking brine shrimp and decapsulated brine shrimp. And they're doing quite well. Um, I've been trying to make a bit of a series about how to breed discus and I've very much been letting the discus take the lead rather than intervening, let them do their own thing. And this, for me, is one of the, the motivating factors. When you've got a fish room and it's in complete disarray and everything feels like it's getting too much for you, and it does feel like that sometimes because you're just like, Pfft. so many things that need to be done just to maintain this, never mind improve or the next project. It can be a bit overwhelming and things like this where you get to see, why is this one fry here? Why is he away from the parents? Is everything okay? Is it not okay? I'm learning as we go here. I've bred discus loads of times. I mean, I'm no master breeder or anything like that. But where I've always intervened to try and get the biggest yields and things like that, where I've just left them to it. Um, they've had fry a few times. They've laid eggs loads of times. They've had fry. They've eaten the fry. They've laid more eggs and then eaten the fry. They've let the fry die off. And each time they've just got better and better. And the fry at this stage are now starting to recognize, I think, I don't know, that's what I'm trying to learn, the trial and error thing. I think they're starting to recognize that this big ugly mug means food. So they're not scared of me anymore. The parents are starting to recognize I'm not trying to kill them. I'm just trying to keep their water clean. Um, it's really enjoyable. <laughs> I, I, I like this stuff. So. As much as it's cool and it's discus, and discus are really, wow, oh, they're tropical fish, they're extraordinary, they're brilliant. It could be guppies. The, the breeding side of things is just fascinating to me to see how involved the parents are, or in other cases, with the it's Cory's or the zebra danios, not involved, they just get on with it and leave it. It fascinates me, and I love the interaction between me and the fish, the fish and their fry, the fry and the parents. There's something to be gained from it, and it's Things like this that I think keep me above water and don't let me get too disheartened when everything else is falling apart, when the mega tank won't hold water. And I'm just like, what is the point of this anymore? You get these little wins where things start to go well. Even something as simple as this, watching, making brain shrimp, creating brain shrimp, something so simple and common that's done all the time, creating life from a bit of salt water and seemingly a bag of dust. Um, and then using that to feed your fish and literally seeing the bellies turn red when they feed on it and getting full up and growing, it's fantastic. So even though it's chaos and carnage with the mega tank and the big projects too, that also holds its own special place in the hobby for me. Um, I wouldn't be without either of them. So. 
like I say, I'm working on a video on all the trials and tribulations of this at the moment. Um, we're getting there. Uh, that'll come soon, so make sure you click that subscribe button if you're interested in seeing that. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about the reality of the behind the scenes and running a fish tank. A fish tank? A fish room. And it does get a bit overwhelming sometimes when you're just surrounded by... It just looks like a bomb's gone off in here. I know that in a few days, maybe a week or so, I'll get everything tidied up and we'll be back to a nice, fully functioning, but just when it's so much going on and there's so much mess and then you just look at some tanks and go, oh, there's some algae there, and you're like, that's the least of my problems. It isn't always 100% polished, um, or maybe I'm just extra lazy. That could be true too. So I guess I'm just trying to share my motivations behind what goes on here at Aquarium Adventures. There's the big stuff, there's the little stuff, and there's everything in between, but it is very much just my hobby and me pointing a camera at it and filming it. As much as I enjoy that side of it too, it's not about chasing the views. Um, so you're never going to get the sensational stuff really from this channel, I don't think. Um, and not to say that other channels who do produce sensational stuff, that doesn't have a value to itself. There's loads of channels out there. I'm not in competition with all these. We're all sharing a space. We're trying to share things. If you get entertainment, education, whatever it is from any other channels, great. Tell me about them. I want to hear about them. I want to learn more too. The, the thing that worries me is, especially with shorts and things like that, there's a lot of... Is it entertainment, but at the detriment of the fish or the hobby in general? That's the stuff that's a little bit more concerning. Because there's definitely loads of channels out there giving loads of great information, presenting it really well, having really polished videos and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's not me. I'm not fully polishing everything. I'm just looking at all the unpolished tanks around me at the moment. <laughs> but that's not what I mean. It's more about just sharing what the motivation behind this channel is. Hope that makes sense. So, while I start to contemplate rolling my sleeves up to attack some of this, I'll leave you with that thought. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you in the next one. Probably a mega tank update. Bye!